Today, our sermon is going to be about brainwashing. Brainwashing. Today, our sermon is coming to you straight from the Fundamentals of Unicult, the book that I wrote about these ideas that came out of my head from space. I got these ideas from space, and they were put into my head, and I put them in a book, and I compared them with my practical experience on Earth, and I figured out how to make them logical and sound and available and easy to read. As, a, as, a, as an employee of corporate America, my, um, my job is a technical writer. I know how to make language clear and easy to understand. So no matter what you're, as long as you can read, you can understand. So, and if you can't read, that's okay too. I have tons of content on YouTube. We're doing these sermons every week. Maybe reading isn't your thing. That's all right. That's all right. I understand. Not everybody gets educated very well. It's not your fault. Okay. We're going to be talking today from page 69. 69 brainwashing and this is one of my very favorite topics and as an artist some people I saw a comment the other day that was like I thought that this was an art project but now I see that it's sincere and it is an art project and it is sincere when we're talking about art and we're talking about I'm talking about my art I am a brainwasher. My goal is to create so much fucking content that it permeates society to the point that I am affecting everyone's subconscious reality. Sometimes I see celebrities or people I don't know saying things that are very similar to things that I have said. Is this because I said it and they heard it? Is it because they absorbed it from the collective consciousness? I don't know, but I do take credit for a lot of things. <laughs> that are happening in this world because I have been consistently producing content since 2012, putting these ideas into the world. What is brainwashing? In Unicult, we define brainwashing as any internalization of information without deeper consideration. Any internal internalization of information without deeper consideration. This means anything that gets into your belief structure without you making a conscious decision that it should be there. There's tons of stuff like this. If you're asleep, if you're an NPC, if you're a sheeple, your entire belief system is this way. Even if you're very, very, very awake and aware, you have huge chunks of your personality which are actually uh, subconscious frameworks that you picked up from your environment that were actually brainwashed, that actually brainwashed you. It's not wrong to be brainwashed, inherently speaking. Brainwashing is a neutral technology. To influence someone's subconscious, to get them to believe something, to get them to just simply understand something without passing it through their conscious decision-making process, is not inherently evil, but it has been used for evil purposes on this planet. What do I mean? What kinds of things brainwash us? The most insidious and large scale spread type of brainwashing is called narrative. I made up that word to go with this thought, but I, I'm sure other people have thought it. Narrative is the idea of who you are in relation to other people. For instance, gender. When I was a kid, my parents were like, oh, you're a girl. I'm going to paint your room pink and here's a dress and here's a doll and we're going to treat you really softly and nicely. And then I grew up believing that my role in society was to be small and pretty and cute and quiet because of the gender narrative assigned to me. I was not yet old enough to understand the expectation that was being put on me and how it didn't necessarily match up to my true heart and my true expect and my true expression. So merely by being too young, that was brainwashed into me. And secondly, because gender is an entirely pervasive thought form, thought structure in our society that didn't really go challenged 
wide scale until very recently, I just accepted my role in society that other people told me I didn't think too hard about it. I didn't like it. It wasn't comfortable. It wasn't who I really was. But I went along with it because I thought, I guess this is just who and who and what I am because other people told me that. There are so many aspects of narrative that we internalize beyond gender. Who are you in your family? Are you an older sibling? Are you, you know, what kind of expectations did your parents put on to you? Who you are in our society, the kind of role that you perceive yourself as. For instance, I sometimes perceive myself as like a martyr on earth. And I think of myself in this narrative structure that was taught to me through movies and TV. When when I grew up watching, you know, like Home Improvement and I saw Tim Allen treating his wife like shit, you're just like, oh, and then you see like Homer Simpson treating his wife like shit and you see um, Family Guy dad treating his wife like shit and you just see all these dads treating their intelligent, loving wives like shit on TV. You sort of just internalize this idea that your role as a husband is to be this loud, belching, disgusting asshole dude and the role of wife is to be ever patient, ever loving, taking care of all your messes. These things haven't been challenged in our society for a very long time. And we're now at a point in time when we're overcoming, when we're analyzing, when we're breaking free of the brainwashing and we're saying, wait a minute, why are we buying into all these narratives that are not serving us? They're actually very damaging to everyone involved. Even the patriarchal male figure is being damaged by this structure, by these expectations. Narrative is just one form of brainwashing. Another form of brainwashing is the subconscious brainwashing, and they all work together. When you can sing a song that's on the radio and you know every single word, but you've never intentionally pressed play on that song, what do you think is happening? That's brainwashing. The content has permeated your reality to the extent that you have taken it inside your consciousness. You're singing along the words. You know the melody, you know the lyrics. You might not even know what it's about because your conscious mind hasn't taken it in. But we know that the subconscious is an exceptionally important space. And this space of the subconscious is under attack by detrimental media. I am a multimedia artist because I believe by layering content, um, audio, visual, conceptual, etc., by layering it, it makes it more and more condensed so that it gets into your brain in a deeper understanding. The fact that we know so many songs, the fact that I could tell you the plot of Star Wars even though I've never seen it, all of these things, the, the hero's journey, all of our expectations about reality, even scientific theories such as uh, competition in regards to evolution, these things are stories that we tell ourselves. And when we accept them to be inherently true without doing the research of our own, how did, how did I learn this? Why do I think this is true? Have I proven this myself? You can't always do that. You can't always prove everything yourself. But I'm pointing out all the different ways that we have internalized information without giving it deeper consideration. Which is preferable? In my art, when I make art, and I, and I want people, you know, you're getting brainwashed with the words all one right now. These words are on the screen the whole, the whole time in Unicult Cam Church. You're you're associating everything to the images and the colors on my screen. You're associating brainwash spirals and my hairstyle and everything to the content that's being presented here. This is all happening below your deeper consciousness. So which is a better reality? Is it better to just internalize information without deeper thinking? Or is it better to think deeply about all the information that you're carrying around in your consciousness? There is no value judgment that we can really make as to which one is better and which one is worse. But I can say that on earth, we have systems of deception and systems of greed and systems of darkness, which 
rely a lot on your being a willing participant in systematic endeavors that aren't beneficial to you. By thinking deeply, instead of blindly accepting what's being fed to you in your feed, on your internet feed, or on the, any screen, or on from any, from any radio station, from anywhere, all the ads, everything, by thinking deeply about it, you are taking control over your own consciousness and you're taking control over your own rightful space as a human entity to live a life of joy. It is your divine right to live a life of joy. And the reason why we're talking about brainwashing, the reason why brainwashing is part of Unicult is because your belief structure, the way that you perceive the world, your spirituality, your inherent beliefs, the way that you see yourself in the world directly affects your happiness. If you were told by your parents that you're a piece of shit and then you walk around your whole life like, I'm a piece of shit, your life is going to suck. But that was a brainwash. You didn't, you didn't actually prove that yourself. You took that information on and then maybe you, you validated it through seeing it through, through seeing things happen in your life because you're acting from that place. But if you were to erase all the internalized preconception, preconceived notions that your parents gave you that are detrimental, where would you be? And I don't just mean your parents, I mean your, your entire, your entire family, your entire upbringing, all the TV programs that you watched. I watched so much fucking garbage TV when I was a kid. And I had to deconstruct my entire consciousness from that space. Let's see what the book says here. Fundamentals of Unicult, page 69. When we're talking about the brain and the brain's ability to navigate different aspects of the electromagnetic spectrum, I usually point to my rainbow, but we've got a brainwash spiral here different aspects of the electromagnetic spectrum, we're able to tune in and our brain actually operates on different frequencies. When your brain is in a certain frequency, such as when it's watching TV or looking at a fire or lost in a daydream, you're more easily interpreting subconscious information and internalizing it. Your subconscious um, mind is operating without the consideration of your higher conscious mind. Your, your higher conscious mind is distracted by lights or plot or whatever, and your subconscious mind is actually picking up on things. Things like uh, product placement and subliminal messaging do work. They actually do work, and their uh, subliminal messaging is actually illegal in some places. It's not illegal in the U.S., and there's absolutely no governance over it. Nobody's sitting here telling me I can't put subliminal messages in things. Subliminal messages can't really be... Um, what do you call it when it's legalized? Um, whatever. They can't be um, legally, it's, it's difficult to put them under legal subjective uh, perception because, um, because everything is a subliminal message, right? Like my all one is a subliminal message. Um, the, everything, everything is a subliminal message. If you're intentionally putting subliminal messages into your content to get people to internalize information without deeper consideration, you're brainwashing people. You're, you're a brainwasher. Like, that's what you're doing. And it works because we pick up symbols. Okay, there was a study that was done where they, they did a rating of um, people's trust in different brands or if they had heard of them. And if they hadn't heard of the brand, their trust or, the trust of the brand was lower. So let's say it's like laundry detergent. And if it's like nature's clean, you're like, okay. And it's like Tide, you're like gonna, you're gonna be like, okay, like I recognize Tide, so I trust it more. That's the way that we operate, okay? So this is why advertising works. Because if they blast you with a symbol with an image and you get uh, over and over, you're like, oh, moms love Tide, moms love Tide, moms love Tide. I wanna eat a Tide pod. You know, this is all, it's so trustworthy, people are eating them, right? Um, when they when they subliminally flashed messages of things like Nature's Clean, you know, like this other brand that they hadn't heard of, their trust increased. So when we're talking about subliminal messaging, it works. Yeah, regulated is a good word. Regulated is the perfect word, thank you. Um, I knew that I wasn't gonna get famous immediately. Some part of me wanted to, sure, but I knew that it was going to be a long road for me. What I started to do is blast the message of Unicult all over the internet. I put stickers in 
every package. I put them all over my town. I put flyers up. I put content on the internet. I got on podcasts and TV shows and just have been spreading the message of Unicult everywhere. What has this done to the collective unconscious? The amount of people who have come across my content is huge. Mil millions. Okay, have all those people internalized what I'm saying? Have all those people understood that I like everything that I'm doing? Have all those people understood the deepest part of 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 my mission? No. But they have got in their heads something about Unicult. Oh, I've heard about Unicult. Oh, I know about Unicult. Oh, I kind of recognize that person. Weren't you the person who did this? Weren't you the person who did that? In my attempts to get my message out there, I have subliminally brainwashed the entire world to be more aligned with my messages. Now that everyone is brainwashed to subconsciously accept the content that I'm bringing, it's going to be much easier for me to bring information and the next couple of waves of press coverage that we get in Unicult, people will interpret and understand bigger and better and clearer and they'll be more willing to listen to it even though it's very different from anything they've ever seen or heard before. That's my difficulty is I'm very different than anything anybody's ever seen, excuse me, seen or heard before. And that makes it hard to trust. That puts it kind of outside of this perspective. And I play with that in my art. I call myself a brainwasher. We call ourselves a cult. Is calling Unicult a cult a brainwash? The answer is no. Because when you call something a cult, it's triggering deeper thought immediately, right? Most people are like, why would you call it a cult? God, I had somebody the other day who literally said on my Instagram, I couldn't stand it, man. He said, you know, you really shouldn't call it a cult. <laughs> it's like, Lord Almighty, how long am I going to have to hear that one? I call it a cult for a reason. I call it a cult to give you the opportunity to deeply consider what belief structures you hold. I call it a cult to reach to your true heart, to see beyond your fear, and to see my true heart, and to see the teachings that I'm bringing. And I'm giving you the opportunity to use your uni-given right of a brain, your uni-given right of a heart, your uni-given right of clear perception to see what is really going on in this world. If I'm calling it a cult, I'm giving you the opportunity to analyze it deeply. Does that make sense? <laughs> if I didn't call it a cult, if I called it the World Change Initiative, if I called it Peace on Earth Friends Club. Peace on Earth Friends Club is pretty good. But it doesn't inspire deeper thought. And it's not compelling either. That's boring to me. I want people to think deeply. I want to shock people out of their brainwashed sleeping state. And I want them to think deeply about the world, about the narratives, about the subliminal consciousness message, about their expectations of reality that they're carrying around inside their mind that they didn't even put there. Do you think it's right for you to walk around with ideas that you didn't even put in your own head, that are doing you damage, that are doing you harm? No. We all deserve the right to freedom. We all deserve the right to joy. The only way to joy is to let go of all of our negative preconceptions about the world and enter into a state of blissful happiness where we live in peace and harmony with one another through Unitopia. Beliefs can come from corporations. Beliefs can come from propaganda. Propaganda is huge. And there is not enough awareness about propaganda. The way that propaganda became, okay, I have a song called Propaganda that I highly recommend you listen to. It's on all the streaming platforms. When we say, like, what's his face? Noam Chomsky made it clear for me. When he explained in after 9-11, the fact that we were entering into um, Iraq, Iraq, <laughs> It was supposed to be, it was actually Iran, but we went into Iraq. Woo, what a wild time that was. After 9-11, we went to war. The, 
the fact that we were going to war was deeply questionable. We did it for oil, and that was very blatantly clear, but they didn't want us to really know that, and they wanted us to pretend like it was it was like for like an honorable reason, even though it wasn't. And they were like, ah, oh, weapons of mass destruction, ah, oh. like they just came up with all these words, okay, weapons of mass destruction, okay, whatever. The brainwash, the propaganda that they used during that time was support our troops. And everybody said this. I used to steal the little stickers off people's cars and me and my roommates, we our whole fridge was covered in these little yellow ribbons. It was a trend that said support our troops. And it's a ridiculous piece of propaganda because it simplified the message of why we were going to war and it took all of the potential for critical thinking out of the equation because who can argue with support our troops? Who can argue against saying well, our soldiers are out there fighting and they're usually these like impoverished young men. We should feel sorry for them. Yeah, we do feel sorry. We do want to support our troops. They asked us to support the impoverished people, which they recruited for their nefarious purposes instead of analyzing the deeper reality of why they were going to war at all. The policy would have never passed. We would have all been very upset with if we if the full understanding of why we went to war was on the table at that moment. But they needed our support to do the war, so they changed it the slogan of the war to support our troops. Okay? This is propaganda. When you take a highly charged emotional situation and you give it a slogan to distract everybody from the real problem. This happens all the time, and not just with slogans. The entire situation of Q, which I probably get like blocked on YouTube just for saying the letter, but the entire thing took real conspiracies that are really happening and paired it with insane, made-up bullshit, and then in doing that, kind of created this overarching simplification that everyone looks at and just goes, ugh, that's not you know, that's not real, that's crazy. And no one wants to align with that. And if you do, you've been bamboozled. But that's not to say that there's not content in, that's under that umbrella that isn't 100% factual. This happens all the time with different theories and different ideas and uh, just the entire perception. I see it happen all the time. To become aware of these things is to understand that maybe there isn't an overarching evil group of people who are controlling the world, okay? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But what we do understand is that top-down power pyramids do exist. Your boss's boss's boss has a bunch of money and a bunch of power in our world to do things, and they have an agenda to keep that power flowing just to them. This is an insane misunderstanding of true power. This is an insane misunderstanding of spiritual our spiritual right as humanity. It's an insane misunderstanding of how benefit works. When you benefit other people, you benefit yourself. And we all raise up together to keep other people down is to keep yourself down. But they don't know that, okay? And everyone is working to align with their agenda. I'm working to align with my agenda. I'm pushing my agenda right now, which is of, you know, oneness and love and harmony and peace. We're all working to push our agenda forward. And it just so happens that the people who we perceive as having more power in our society, their agenda is usually one of greed and of um, just madness. Because they have the desire to push their agenda and they have the resources, they have bots, you know, on Twitter that, that spread their message. They have accounts. Like when you think of advertising, this is the thing. When you think of advertising, you think, oh, I'm being shown an ad. It says promoted. I can recognize this as an ad. The majority of advertising is not coming at you that way. If you see a tweet that's talking about a fast food restaurant and it's a popular tweet, the chances of it being actually sponsored by and written by and promoted by and um, and created by that fast food chain under an account, if you don't think these fast food chains are just are not just sitting around creating popular Twitter accounts in order to promote content which gets their brand in your consciousness, in your feed, subliminally without the promoted advertisement box, you have to be aware of these things. 
It's happening. Advertising isn't like you think. It's happening all the time. Information, internalization. You're not just you're not just going to school and learning things. You're learning things all the time. Every single person you interact with is teaching you different things about the world. Every single decision you make about how you're going to operate in this world is changing your consciousness. You can take the power back into your own consciousness. You can take the power back into your own mind. You can take the power back by thinking deeply about your reality, by trying to understand what are other people's agendas. And you can take your power back by finding unconditional love for yourself and for others. Through the process of finding unconditional love, you raise your consciousness up to a place where you can easily see other people's reality. When you are at a higher vibration than someone else, you can completely understand their vibration. It's easy to see because you're at a higher vantage point. And when you're at a higher vantage point, you have no desire to take advantage of them. It's a, it's a balancing, it, it's, a, it's a spiritual balance where when you're higher vibrational and you can fully read someone's mind, you can fully understand what they're going through, you have total compassion for them. You have total understanding and total compassion. How do you get there? Have total understanding and total compassion for yourself first and foremost. Start to be critical of your surroundings. Start to be critical of the ways that you internalize information. Ask yourself, if you have a belief like, oh, well, this world is just bullshit or, you know, my God is a Christian God who will punish me if I do this or that. Whatever it is, if you have a harmful thought, if you have a detrimental belief, if you have something inside you that hurts you, ask yourself where you got that idea. It was probably brainwashed into you through a traumatic upbringing. It was probably brainwashed into you through toxic television and other forms of media. And it is your divine right to dismantle that belief structure and to tune into the truth of the universe, which is love which is unconditional acceptance and perfection at all moments. Unconditional perfection at all moments. You are unconditionally perfect. You are absolute perfection at this moment. That's the way the higher realm sees it. They don't even see the darkness. It's nothing to them. It's just silliness. It's just nothing. Tune into your heart. Tune into your consciousness, tune into your aura, start protecting yourself from these subliminal messages, protecting yourself from these detrimental toxic narratives. If you believe you are someone who X, Y, or Z because X, Y, or Z, ask yourself why. Where did you get these beliefs about yourself? Where did you get these beliefs about the world? Let's do our prayer. And I forgot to do announcements, so we'll do announcements after the prayer. Spirit of Uni, thank you for channeling such a beautiful and high vibrational sermon through me about brainwashing. We're calling you to bless every single person who is watching here in the past, present, and future. We are blessing Jackie again today. We are really celebrating Jackie today and just so grateful for their presence in our lives. We are praying for all the members of Unicult. We are praying for the server. We're praying for Unicult Supply Co. Where you can get fundamentals of Unicult. You can sign up for Unicult officially. And we are praying to bless each and every viewer who is here today. You need bless. All right. So let's do some announcements. After Cam Church, we have... Um, our new member mixer slash uni brunch where you can go in the discord server if you're an official member and you can chat with um, all of your friends who are in unicults we have such amazing people in unicult and such amazing endeavors happening um, oh we're we're raising money for uni acres we have fifteen hundred dollars everyone this is our chart. We have $1,500 um, saved for Uni Acres. If you are interested in donating to our commune, um, please send thousands of dollars. Every dollar counts. Every dollar matters. We got a $3 donation the other day. I was thrilled. I was thrilled. 
Every dollar counts. We're working on saving $25,000 this year. Um, and we're going to keep saving in order to get a commune so that we can start building our Unitopian reality. And it's going to be really fun. We can't wait. We have $1,500 already. It's true. Um, and yeah, go go shop at Unicult Supply Co. Um, we have a poetry book that I wrote called Apocalypse Mundane. I really like this poetry book. Oh, good good question. Thank you, Green Happy. Um, yes, the practice for this week is to find one thought that you internalized without deeper consideration. One belief. That's a lot. And then um, find out where you actually got it from and then decide what you're going to replace it with. Oh, yeah. And um, I know Jackie likes to add the art in. I don't know if Z is going to do that this week. I'll try to think of... Um, Okay, the art this week is to create a subliminal piece of art to brainwash yourself positively. This can be like if you hang up a little poster on your wall and it says like, like right now on my whiteboard, I have, um, I have perfect child of God, perfect child of uni, perfect child of God, whatever you want. I put that on my whiteboard. I noticed it for a few days and then I start not noticing it, but it's in my environment. So you can create a piece of art and you can put it around your house. That will make it subliminal. Or you can create, if you if you like to do video editing like I do, you can create a video where subliminal messages flash on the screen. Um, and, you know, this is the kind of art that would be really cool if, if you made a video. It'd be fun to put on the Unicult YouTube channel. And I think other people would really like it. There's a lot of fun things you can do. You can also do it with um, with audio. There's binaural beats. Um, there's lots of different ways you can subliminally brainwash yourself for positive energy. But just make sure that that whatever you're subliminally messaging, brainwashing yourself with is 100% positive. You don't want it to be like, I'm going to let go of fear. Like that, you got the word fear in there. Don't, don't do that to yourself. You want to say, um, I am very brave. I, I feel confident. That's even better. I'm pure confidence. Um, other announcements. We have Cam Church Review on Wednesdays. We have Thursday Church led by our beautiful Erin on Thursdays. We have Unicult Practice led by Jackie. Hopefully um, Z will be back working on that. And we have Uni Coven. Um, which is transforming a little bit if you're interested in learning spells and creating content for Unicult um, and doing magic. You can join Unicoven. And we have Crystal Club led by Troy every month. And we have Technology Club, which is currently being led by Peter. And we have a new newsletter. If you're not on the newsletter mailing list, go to universe.com, UN1V3RS3. And it says, submit your email for regular brainwashing then that's where you can sign up for the mailing list. And shout out to Shelby and Unimagic for Cam Church Review. Absolutely. Thank you. We have so much going on. We have movie. Uh, Ghosty and Amzi are creating the, the, um, the newsletters. They're going to be amazing. And then we have movie night and game night. And it's just, it's just an amazing community. Yes, you can sign up on the mailing list at UN1V3RS3. It's universe.com with ones for I's and threes for E's. And it's on the main page. It says, submit your email for regular brainwashing, and you can get brainwashed by us. UN1V3RS3. We're sending out, we send it out on the, on the new moon and the full moon. If you're in Unicult, you'll get it on the full moon. If you're not in Unicult, you'll get it on the new moon. New Moon News. Do we have any questions? Your brain is clear. What movies do we watch? Sometimes we watch like documentaries about other cults. Sometimes we watch um, horror movies. Some people like horror movies. My sister ruined a horror movie for me last night. I said, oh, have you seen this horror movie? She goes, oh, yeah. And then she said the ending. And I was like, oh, I thought we could watch it. 
<laughs> I don't usually like um, horror movies, though. If we had a speakeasy, the password would be UN1V3RS3. That's true. I went to a speakeasy once. I to, it was a cute little thing to do. I don't really like alcohol, but secret, secret passcodes are fun. Oh my God, milkman. Jesus Christ. All right. I hope you all had an amazing camp church. I hope you all have an amazing, <laughs> an amazing, um, weekend. Yeah. At the, uh, at Unicult Supply Co, you can get Unicult robes and you can practice your Unicult practice in your robes. And I'll see you all next week. You need bless. Thank you for joining me.